Hi, Captain Dylan Hubbard here from Hubbard's Marina. And uh, tonight we wanted to give you some of our top mangrove snapper fishing secrets. If you want to learn more about how to catch mangrove snapper, this is the video to do it. My name is Captain Dylan Hubbard from Hubbard's Marina. Hubbard's Marina is a fourth generation owned family. Family operated and family operated business, uh, family owned and operated business, and we've been fishing Central West Coast of Florida since 1928. Uh, we have a ton of different party boat and private charter trips, and today we're going to give away some of our favorite techniques, tips, and tricks to catch more mangrove snapper here in the Gulf of Mexico along Central Florida's west coast. Uh, so the best uh, starting point for mangrove snapper to make sure that you capitalize on the most amount of mangroves possible while you're near shore or offshore fishing is making sure that you have the proper rod and reel. The proper rod and reel is a great place to start for those quick biting, super smart, super intelligent, and very uh, aggressive mangrove snapper. A mangrove snapper is a very quick biting fish, uh, and they're very, very... Uh, they're not only quick, but they also are very uh, aggressive and smart in the way they feed. So they're going to come up and pop that bait. They're going to break it apart. They're going to do a quick circle and come around and chew up the pieces. So you have to be very good at feeling all that action. The best way to do that is making sure that you have a very sensitive tip with a great backbone to your rod. We have a Hubbard's Marina Killer Stick in the shop. That's one of my favorite mangrove snapper fishing rods. Uh, Bull Bay rods, they make a great fishing pole as well. Um, there's, other, some, there's some other really great manufacturers out there. Uh, Dogfish Tackle, Bass Pro, they all have a bunch of different mangrove snapper rods. Offshore Angler makes a Ocean Master jigging rod that works very well for mangrove snapper as well. The whole point, though, is you want to have a very sensitive tip, uh, but it needs to go into a good backbone, something that's quick action, uh, so that way you can really set the hook on that fish. Uh, and then, once you have that good rod and reel choice picked out, also the rod needs to be light. It needs to be sensitive, light, and a strong backbone. Then you need to have the right type of reel. Uh, for mangrove snapper fishing, it's very important that you have a very, very high gear ratio reel. The higher the gear ratio, the more line you're going to retrieve more quickly. The quicker you retrieve line, the easier it is to set that hook in the mangrove snapper's mouth. So again, best starting spot to catch more mangrove snapper in the Gulf of Mexico is the right rod and reel choice. Uh, so comment below if you have a favorite rod and reel choice for your mangrove snapper fishing in the Gulf of Mexico or comment below if you want to hear more about a different subject next time we do one of these how-to videos. So once you have the rod and reel choice down, uh, then you want to make sure that you have a good I prefer a two-speed reel. Uh, so not only is it a high-speed reel, but a two-speed reel. That way it enables me, if I do happen to get a bigger fish, like a big gag grouper or something other than a um, mangrove snapper, like sometime you catch red snapper, that two-speed reel enables you to click a button and adjust that drag, and then all of a sudden it's like you have a low-speed reel as well. And so the lower the gear ratio, the higher the power you have. So for mangrove snapper, you want a light, tip a very sensitive tip a good backbone very light rod so you can feel that bite even easier and then a very high gear ratio reel and it doesn't hurt to have a two speed reel so you have the option to go low gear ratio if you need it now for hooks uh, mangrove snapper again are a very quick biting aggressive fish so it's very important that you're able to set the hook quickly and efficiently in order to do that we like a very thin wire diameter hook I really like the owner hooks or the Ocean Master hooks from Bass Pro Shops, the offshore angler hooks. Uh, something with a very thin wire. The thinner wire diameter on your hook, the easier it is to get that hook into that fish's mouth and have it drive home more quickly. Also, you want to watch the barb size. If you have these hooks out there that have a thin diameter, but then all of a sudden they have this huge barb that sticks out at a 90 degree angle away from the hook. And that is not good for setting the hook quickly. Once the hook is set, that big barb is going to hold the hook in that fish's mouth, but it's difficult to get that barb driven through the mouth. So thin wire diameter uh, and then also a small barb or non-existent barb makes it really easy. Also, with the hooks, you want to double snell your hooks. 
it's really almost mandatory to double snail your hooks when uh, mangrove snapper fishing. And that is my biggest secret for mangrove snapper fishing. The double snail rig is going to increase your catch ratio tenfold. Make sure you click the little wow face in the video if you like using the double snail rig. If you don't know how to use the double snail rig or you don't know how to tie one, simply search how to tie a double snail rig on Google or YouTube and then add Hubbard's Marina. You can see the video that we filmed in the galley of one of the fishing boats and I'll show you how to tie that double snail rig. It's a very simple rig to tie and it allows you to put two hooks on one leader put two hooks in that sardine or thread fin chunk and it enables you to have twice the amount of hook in that bait so you're at, you have a higher chance of getting a hook in that quick biting mangrove snapper's mouth also you want to make sure that you're using the proper line i really like the bass pro shops offshore angler uh Floral carbon, uh, but people say the Yozuri works really well. We sell the trick fish in our office, and that works really well for me as well. So, a floral carbon line is going to be very, very good when you're fishing for mangrove snapper because, again, they're very smart fish. They can see very, very well, and they're not going to hit something that doesn't look natural. So, floral carbon is a must, typically for mangrove snapper offshore. And I'm, when offshore, I mean 20 miles or more from shore. Typically, I'm going to be using anywhere from 40 to 50 pound fluorocarbon. Near shore, which means anywhere from the beach out to about 20 miles, 30 to 40 pound, 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon. For near shore mangrove snapper fishing, anywhere from a four to five odd hook. For offshore mangrove snapper fishing, typically a five to six odd hook setup. Now, uh, as far as line choice for mangrove snapper, again, 40 to 50 pound is pretty average offshore, 30 to 40 near shore, uh, but braided line definitely helps that sensitivity. Again, at the beginning of this video, we talked about one of the biggest helps to making sure you catch lots of mangrove snapper is that sensitive rod and that uh, high gear ratio reel but also making sure you have sensitive line. So the way I do that is I make sure that I have braided line in my reel and then I use a fluorocarbon or monofilament top shot. And a top shot is simply adding fluorocarbon or monofilament to your braided line. So that way your high gear ratio reel and sensitive rod has plenty of sensitive line in that reel and then you have that shock absorption and you have the ability of that line to disappear in the water towards the end thanks to that top shot. So all you do is simply fill your reel with braided line. Typically for mangrove snapper, about 50 pound uh, braid is what I use in my high gear ratio reel. I love the Daiwa Saltiga 2-speed. That's my go-to reel when I'm near shore or offshore fishing for mangrove snapper. Now, I'll fill that reel up with that braided line, and then I'll do a line-to-line -line knot, typically an FG knot or a PR bobbin knot, and then I'll put about anywhere from 30 to 60 feet of fluorocarbon or monofilament on top of that braid. The idea behind that is to make sure that braided line isn't anywhere near the bottom when I'm fishing for those super smart, intelligent, and very, uh, very leader-wise mangrove snapper. Then I'll put my egg sinker on that fluorocarbon or monofilament top shot. I'll tie a swivel and then about a four to six foot leader and my double snell rig. Now, typically offshore, about a six odd double snell rig, about 50 pound fluorocarbon, a 50 pound top shot and 50 pound braided line is a great starting point. As far as bait is concerned... The best bait, in my opinion, for mangrove snapper is hands down a sardine or thread fin plug. That simply means taking the head off the thread fin or sardine, the tail off the thread fin or sardine, and in the case of a thread fin, I'll additionally add a third step, which is just trimming the belly. That way, I get a nice, very hydrodynamically sized uh, sardine plug. Typically, towards the tail is a little bit thinner than it is towards the head. So that way, I make sure I tie or I put my first hook towards that thicker side. My second hook goes in right behind it. So that way, when I hold my bait, uh, or as my bait drops to bottom, that weight is going to be pulling that hook or that bait down hydrodynamically. If you put your first hook towards the skinny side of the bait and your second hook in behind it, 
then you're going to be dragging it down backwards. It's not going to be as hydrodynamic. It's typically going to spin on the way to bottom. And when it spins, it spins around your main line. You lose sensitivity. It doesn't look natural and you won't catch mangrove snapper. So you have to hook your bait in such a way that it will not spin on the way to bottom. Once you get to bottom, you hang out there for a second. If one of those fish don't come up there and pop that bait right away, all you do is simply lift your rod tip up to the sky and drop it back down to bottom very slowly. You want to make sure that you're keeping that line tight enough to feel the lead, but not tight enough to disturb that lead on the bottom. And you constantly have to move your rod tip with the boat to make sure that you're not disturbing that lead on the bottom. Because again, mangrove snapper are very, very smart. They're going to be looking at that bait, and if it does not appear natural, they will not bite it. So, if you guys have any questions about mangrove snapper fishing or any other type of fishing, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below the video. I'd love to cover some more techniques and tricks and other species with you guys here soon. We're going to try to do more tips and tricks videos often here on our Hubbard's Marina Facebook and YouTube channels. All you have to do is drop your comments in the comments box below and I'll make sure to answer them. Remember, Sunday nights, 8.30 p.m., we always have those live fishing conversations and Q&As. You can answer your, or ask your questions in the comments below those videos Sunday nights at 8.30 p.m., and I'll be happy to answer them live. On these shorter videos, we're just going to rip through some subjects and then end the video on a high note. Remember, tomorrow, June 1st, Red Snapper and Gag Grouper open up. And we're very excited for a Red Snapper season here at Hubbard's Marina. Because remember, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. And tomorrow, we have a 44-hour full moon trip with about five spots left. And we have a 12-hour night mangrove snapper trip. And last week, some of the guys who were doing some of the tips and tricks we gave you in this video caught a lot of mangrove snapper. So, come out and join us tomorrow night at 6 p.m. show up, and you can ride out on our 7 p.m. 12-hour night mangrove snapper trip here at Hubbard's Marina, where, again, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy, we'll see you this Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. for another live fishing conversation. Remember, those are every, week, uh, every Sunday at 8.30 p.m. And don't hesitate to drop your comments into this video uh, below and let us know what you want to hear about next and some of the tips and tricks you want to hear about in the next video or this Sunday during our live fishing conversation. Enjoy red snapper season. It's going to be a great start to the season. The bite was incredible today, and it's only going to get better through the weekend. Have a great night, and remember again, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. We'll see you soon at Hubbard's Marina for some nearshore offshore fishing on our public party boats or our private charter fishing boats. And uh, have a good night, guys. We'll see you Sunday. Thanks for tuning in.